Here's an odd job. I got this adapter with the mill. I wasn't quite sure what it was for at first, but now I realise it takes half inch shank tools and that screw goes against the flat. Now you could use any number of collets to hold this, but having the flat and the screw makes it much more secure. So what's the odd job? Well at the moment the drawbar is 3 8 UNC. I need to make it M12. It's been a bit difficult to line this up, but that's within about 4 thou, 0.1 of a mil. That'll do. I'm only drilling a hole after all and tapping it. 13 30 seconds drill, that's about 10.2 millimetres. How deep should the hole be for the thread? Well when I look at this adapter, it's about one and a half inches and then when I check the spec it's 33.5 millimetres. These machine taps are really good. They weren't expensive, but they're as sharp as anything and really tough. Started off in there. It's fairly soft this, and I did wonder if this adapter isn't homemade. Now when I finish cutting this thread, I'll turn this round and I'll just bore out the inside for a clearance, so at least 12 millimetres down to where the thread ends. When I say bore out, of course I mean drill out. According to the spec, the thread length should be 24 millimetres, but to allow for the taper on the tap, I've taken it into about 30, which is the end of the threaded part on the tap. So in a moment, we'll try it in the mill. Well, now I've cut that 12 millimetre thread, it screws nicely onto this drawbar. This is the drawbar from the vertical milling head on the Harrison. Kind of looks good, doesn't it? Except, I forgot the basic rule. And the basic rule is, assume nothing, trust nothing. <laughs> Check everything. Because I hadn't even thought about it, when I came to fit this into the spindle, this bit here is too wide. And then when I look at those two slots there, well, you can see straight away, they're not wide enough, are they? So this almost certainly is homemade, or it's made for something else, I don't know. So, this small job, this odd job, is becoming much more of a big job. But I don't mind, actually, because it's a good practice go for remachining the taper, the int 40 taper, on that one inch arbor I've got. I need to machine it down to 30 int so I can get all my basic te techniques right before I try that job. And on that topic of assume nothing, trust nothing, I was using this Morse Taper 2 adapter to clock the taper here to set up the top slide on my lathe. And I found that this isn't concentric with this and to some extent not with this either. Uh, although it's all very nicely finished and ground, um, this doesn't need to be, and it isn't. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll look for something else, and I thought, well, I'll definitely be able to trust my Jones and Shipman 27mm arbor, because this side of it and the long side of it have to be concentric. But I found problems with that as well, because you can see there, that's running true enough, isn't it? But if I move it along here, it's not running so true. Just concentrically is what I mean and there must be some tilt or something in the way it's held in those jaws so I'm going to try putting that between centers with the Jones and Shipman arbor between centers I can tell you this part here runs out by about half a thou and this part runs out by about two thou so five one hundredths of a millimeter now I've swapped it round and I get the opposite result so what that tells me is that this hole here, where the drawbar goes in, is a little bit off center. But it does mean, you know, I don't have a sign bar, I don't have slip gauges. So if I want to copy this, I have to get it right. So the next thing I'm going to try is I'm going to put, leave this end on the left hand side on centers, and the right hand side I'm planning to put my fore jaw on, and then get this dead in the center. Here's the setup. And that is running true.
or near enough anyway. There is a little bit of this if I heave at it, I can't help that. But if I let it relax to its natural position, it looks true to me. So now I can clock that taper. I've got the taper set. Excuse this light, can't do anything about that. I just try this with the waggle test. So I'm gripping the top slide and there's not much waggle on it. So the gibbs must be set right on the top slide. And I'm at the right hand side of the taper now and I'm gonna to go towards the headstock. And I think that's good enough. If I rotate this, bit of a jump there as it go over, uh, goes over a bump, but otherwise I think it's fine. So I'm happy with that now. It's taken a while. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. So I've put this fitting in the four jaw and I've clocked it and that clock's concentric, fine. I've shortened it by about a millimetre because according to the spec between that face and this face it was about a mil long it should be 70 mil so all that's fine but then I had a think this is just a sort of a driving flange here I can't be sure that that's actually at 90 perpendicular to anything so I can't trust any of this the only thing I can trust is the place where the tool goes into the front of this fitting. So if I mount that, say, in a collet, it's a half inch, um, takes a half inch tool. If I put a piece of half inch bar or something in a ER32 collet and then put this on it, sticking out, let's clock this and see if that runs true. If it turns out this taper isn't concentric with the tool holder hole, I'm kind of stuffed anyway, aren't I? Let's see how we go with that. Half inch silver steel in an ER32. Trust nothing. I had to hit this to get it running true. I measured here, this is absolutely true. This was all over the place. I've tightened it. Did everything right, I think. But hitting it was what I needed to do. That's near enough for that. Now then. Let's take our job. This is a reasonably tight fit on there. Well, that's not bad at all to say that it's just a single grub screw holding this onto this piece of half inch silver steel. I don't know what it's like further up. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? I don't think I'm going to find a better setup than this, so I'm just going to machine everything on here. It's taper time, and there's about two millimeters to come off this, so one millimeter on the dial. It's done. I wish it was a better finish. It's about usual for when I cut tapers. It's very difficult to move the top slide smoothly and get an even cut. But we all know that, don't we? Getting a good finish on this is proving to be extremely difficult. I tried with carbide, using all the tricks. I still end up with a rippled finish. So I'm using high speed steel with a rounded nose, a very light cut, running it at quite high speed, 700 RPM, something like that, and a very gradual turn on the top slide handle. And I seem to be making progress with it now. Well, that's the finished job. Now, although that surface has got some scratches in it, it's smooth. What I mean is, with the carbide, it was undulating. I could feel it with my fingers of doing this. And that doesn't feel like that. Now, as far as the scratches are concerned, I guess it's just the material. I'm certainly not going to blame my machining. And it's so difficult advancing the top slide by hand, because you can't get a constant turn on it. 
Well, as per the spec, I've left a flat shoulder here. Should be 1.6, it's probably nearer two. I don't think it matters. And the taper finish is at 31.6. Now it should be 31.75. It might mean that this goes slightly further into the spindle nose than I would like. But if need be, I'll just take a bit off this face here um, and I'm sure that will be fine. So I'm gonna leave this setup in place, get these cut, these slots cut here. Try not to spin my micrometer round. Get these cut. They should be 16 mil wide. Try it in and then I can come back to cut this face if I need to do that. I'm still waiting for some two and a half millimeter o-ring cord to finish putting together the vertical head on my Harrison mill. So to cut the slots here, which are going to be 16 wide, I'm relying again on my shaper milling head. So I've put a score line on here which gives me the vertical, which I've lined up with a square. And then I've got a small drill in the milling head and using that to line up the head with this line here. So that will give me the movement in this direction on the shape of RAM and then that's locked now. And I've got the INT30 adapter in a four-sided indexing block in the vise on my shaper table and of course that's the milling head. Well we start by touching off. Okay, wind across. It's a cut on, not a lot. Oh I don't know. 0.2 of a mil, just to test it to start with. Wind it back. Well, it's done that without too much complaint. So we'll put another cut on. Point two, point blah, 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 blah. Maybe 0.4 of a mil, that one. See what this does. It's going to be a slow job, isn't it? OK, you can join me in a while and we'll see how we're getting on. Well, this is definitely working. I'm taking half a millimetre cuts without much complaint. It's just going to take a while, that's all. This might be the last cut. I've been taking 0.4 millimetre cuts. I found it was better to take the lighter cuts. I could just work more quickly that way because it's quite difficult to turn the handle and make it smooth. Right, measurement time. I think it's done. It's nice and quiet, isn't it? Bit of hand held. That side is finished, so got to turn it over in this block, flip it, and do the other side. Took about 20 minutes, that I think. Well, that's both sides cut now. The chances of this fitting straight onto the spindle without any further adjustment are quite slim really. The block that sits in there only has about 0.2 millimetres gap between these edges here. And if I haven't got the milling head directly central, then these are going to be offset and it's going to bind. I'm not trying to talk it down or set low expectations, but I have to be realistic. Let's clean it up and give it a try anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, place your bets. I'll wind this in with a drawbar. Give it a wiggle. Ooh, it's looking promising. Uh, well, it does that much. Whether it's seating at the bottom of the taper, I can't really tell. I'll just give it a bit of a tighten up and see what happens. Um, we'll start the machine. See if it wobbles, perhaps. Let's 
try higher gear. Really what I need to do is put a tool in there. Let's hold on a minute. Okay, one final test. Let's put a clock on it. Well, folks, this is just as it happens. I've not tried this. Set that to zero. If it's within 0.1 of a mil or fourth hour, I'd be ecstatic. Let's give it a go. <laughs> I'm going to call that a win. I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching. Well, I think that was the toughest test yet for the Shaper Mill, and it's proved itself very capable. Who would have thought? Just a postscript. When I came to extract this, I found that the taper had locked in here, and I had to extract it with a drawbar, which is just what you'd want, isn't it? Very pleased with that.